Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever living boo boo staying off of that subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1100 ladder and keep on climbing towards our goal of being the biggest pimp in the Yu Gi Oh community. I don't know, I just made up that last part up. But, <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very tired from the Saturday regional. It's Sunday at the time of me filming this, uh, but I'm still extremely tired. I just got back home uh, from being out at the regional. Uh, very tired, had a great time at the regional, went six and three if you kept up with my community post. I was updating that uh, throughout the day. Uh, some funny things that happened, uh, or rather just like a little news report wrap up from what happened at the regional. Um, my dad played Burn, he scrubbed out uh, as expected. Uh, he pissed some people off, which was funny. Uh, round one at the table behind me, uh, the dude went to go cut his opponent's deck, and instead he looked through his opponent's deck. So, like, five judges had to get involved, and it was fucking hilarious. Um, yeah, news report, or news flash, don't look at your opponent's deck when you go to cut it. I don't know why he did that. I don't know if he was just confused. Um, but that was a thing! <laughs> so, yeah, before round one even began, I guess people were getting DQ'd left and right. It was, it was really damn funny. Um, to all of the judges, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. A million times over, you guys are the best. Shout out to Raymond, the head judge. Raymond, love you, man. You're a fantastic head judge. All the judges, they were great. I've seen them for years upon years upon years of going to regionals in Kissimmee, uh, Orlando, Florida. So thank you to all the judges for being out there. Thank you to the staff, everybody involved that made the regional possibility because without them, we don't have regionals. So I always like to take the time to thank the staff and the judges involved because I feel that they don't get thanked enough. And if we didn't have them, we wouldn't have fucking regionals, ladies and gentlemen. So you need to thank your staff. Really do appreciate it. There's also a dual terminal machine there if you wanted to uh, pop in some money and get some dual terminal cards. That was pretty cool to see. Um, other than that, uh, they forgot to drop my dad when he marked off drop on the paper. He was two and three at that point, so I don't really think it mattered. Um, and on top of that, we also pulled a Starlight out of our five entry packs. First pack I open and we pull the Starlight Gold Carry. They go for 195 to 200 bucks. So we literally made all of our money back and then some on travel expenses, which was really funny. Uh, my parent, or not my parents, my grandparents live in Daytona, so I don't have to like actually spend money on a hotel or anything. So, cause it's only an hour and 15 minute drive to the regional from that point. So, but still though, being able to make good money. And as you're gonna see, some of this stuff is unsleeved because all the stuff that's unsleeved, I plan on selling the shit. Because as you know, I buy whatever deck I wanna play and then I turn around and sell it. I'm sure you're going to say, Avery, you probably spent $970 to $1,000 on cash tira. No, I spent about maybe a couple hundred bucks. I had someone ask me about that today. Uh, played against somebody. He was playing Math Mech, and he actually subscribed to the channel. So if you see this, what's up, man? Had a great match with you. Really quick to go into our matchups. Round one, we beat Sprite. He was new to the deck. Round two, we lost in like 10 minutes to a cash tira mirror. Uh, he 2 owed us real quick. My asshole got stomped in. We opened up double lava gold in game one. He decided to end on just a rise heart. I'm like, yeah, you use that millennium eye to look at my hand pimp it was so fucking bullshit round three we beat trap trick and i sat down and i was like i hope to god i don't go against trap trick and uh, we won that thank god i would play game two so angrily i was slamming down my cards and everything i was pissed round four we beat uh math mech which was uh the guy that subscribed to our channel so shout out to him really cool dude round five we lost to sprite he was a cool guy round six we actually played against sky striker and we won which was surprising i played against striker i was only x2 at this point then I was X3 because we lost a Sprite and the dude was a dickhole. Um, he was basically just playing for time. And then when it came to my turn, he was trying to rush me. Yeah, we almost called a judge on his bitch ass. And I had seen him there at regionals in Kissimmee for years. So I was surprised that he was an asshole. But I mean, people like that, to me, I can't help but laugh because it's like you, you, those big types of people, they feel like they have to have the biggest cock in the room because they think that they're good at a children's card game. And it's like, bro, I'm just trying to get my invite and you're out here like trying to be the next Jesse Cotton. Like, get the fuck out of here like you're trash. Uh, and then round eight, we beat Trap Trick. And then round nine, we beat the Cash Tira Mirror to finish off six and three, 56th place. We unfortunately did not get the invite. We fell just a little bit short uh, out of 473 people. So I want to sell this deck and throw it on out in the garbage. Let's uh, let's get on into it. So we're playing three copies of Fenrir, three copies of Unicorn. These are the MVPs. If you don't know what these cards do, you don't know what Cash Tira does. Uh, it's what starts your engine. And uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's really all there is to it. 
uh, one Scareclaw Cash Tira. I only like one. One is fine. It did what it needed to do. Uh, one Tira Element Cash Tira. Uh, the milling was kind of whatever. It never really came up. One copy of Ogre never really came up. It's just another name. Nothing much else to say. Uh, we're playing two copies of Rise Heart. I like two, not three. I've seen builds where people play three in a fucking Rota to get this thing, and that just feels so unnecessary. Like, you do not need the Rise Heart that bad. Uh, we're playing three copies of Ash Blossom. It's it's Ash. I mean, it's better against Rogue. Like, sometimes Cash Tira can just play through it, and if you go against Sprite, they're just gonna be like, haha, cool, I can play through it, bitch, because that deck is literally just all gas and all extenders. Like, I fucking hated that matchup. Uh, three copies of Lava Golem. So, this was MVP, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not playing three Lava Golem, I don't give a fuck what deck you're playing. You need to play three Lava Golem. This is so busted, this format. Like, I cannot tell you how many times I would open this. My opponent would just vomit on the board, and I'd be like, cool, Lava. Uh, in the Kashtira Mirror, he was playing the Baron Engine, and he ended on, like, Diabolsis, Shangri-Era, a Birth in the Back Row, uh, Baron, and a Rise Heart. And I opened up Lava Golem, and I'm just like, okay, Lava Golem, you're Baron and a Rise Heart, and he used Shangri-Era to summon out Scareclaw Kashtira in the standby phase. So I, I was already, like, able to summon out a Rise Heart off of just one Kashtira. We ended up making Big Eye, taking his Diabolsis, attacking into his Scareclaw, and then making Zeus over the Big Eye and just nuking away the board. We had Big Bang, Birth, and, like, a Rise Heart in hand, so we activated Birth uh, to get back Unicorn, get Theosis, and just make plays. Um... And that was in game three. We ended up ending on Flare Metal because we were getting close to time. He Lava Golem me, set a Cross Out and pass. I drew, switched Zeus to attack mode. He used Cross Out to call Birth because that was still in our back row. And I just went, okay, cool. Attack for 6,000. I'm at 7,000. You're 2,000. Uh, pass turn. And then he scooped. This card is, is disgusting. It's so, so damn good. It won me so many games. I love whenever I opened up double because you could just easily break apart boards. Three copies of Ibley. So this card only came up like three times out of the fucking day. Uh, although I only won three dice rolls. Round three, round five, and I think like round seven were all my dice roll wins. Like the dice roll was not in my favor uh, this weekend. Um, Ibley was cool. Um, in the Kashtira mirror, he thought he could still nib me. And I was like, no, you need to read the card. It specifically says that you, can, you can't special summon anything except Link Monsters. Um, so it did come clutch in that regard. Other than that, like, I mean, we're not playing Thrust and Talents and shit, so, like, you don't have a really a way to dig for this outside of, like, Prosperity, so it was whatever. Like, if they had Nib, they had Nib. I think I also kind of misread the room a little bit because, you know, some of the Cash Tira players were just ending on, like, a Rise Heart game one, which to me is just foolish because it's, like, even though I knew that line existed, I would rather just go balls to the walls because I'm more than likely not going to be able to win on just in a Rise Heart if they have a way to out it or if they have a Kaiju. So, like, either way, I'm fucked. Although I only got hit with Nib once... I only got hit with Lava Golem once. That was the last round. I only got hit with one Kaiju. So really, this that kind of stuff didn't come up often. Most people were just side-decking it. Uh, for the spells, we're playing three copies of Lance. This card's disgusting. I had someone try to Floodgate Trap Hole me and Trap Trick, and I went, Lance. Someone tried to... Uh, the Sprite player that was like acting like he had the biggest dick in the room, even though he was just a little shit, uh, he tried to imper my Unicorn. I went, Lance, bitch. And he's just like, oh, yo, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, he was he was such a dumbass. Like it was comical to me. Uh, we're playing three copies of Econ. This didn't come up a whole lot, um, but it was interesting. Uh, in the Mathmic matchup, he summoned out Sigma, got out another monster, and on resolution, we used Econ to tribute a monster and take the Sigma. So he had to kind of play suboptimally. Um, so it, it was helpful in that regard. Uh, and then we're playing three copies of Prosperity. This is really what makes the deck expensive. You have to play Prosperity. If you're not, you just can't play the deck. I'm sorry. I know that budget players are going to get mad about that, but, like, you have to play Prosperity in this deck. The digging is so damn good. Uh, and then three copies of Birth. I upped it from two to three because it's good. <laughs> like, that's literally the only reason. Uh, three copies of Raysoth. Uh, two are misprint. One is not. I hope to God I can still sell it to uh, my local OTS store even with the misprints because I'm, I'm not going to deal with fucking eBay and people wanting to barter and stuff. I just want to get my money and... Throw this deck on out in the garbage. <laughs> three copies of Theosis, because you got to play three. I don't know why people play less than three. One Terraforming, because it's good. Uh, and then one Preparation and one Big Bang. This actually came up in the Mirror Match, where I had it set as a bluff. And he brought out um, Shangri-Era and, like, two other Cash Tira. So I went, okay, cool. Big Bang. And I'm sitting with a set Unicorn that he used Book of Moon on. And so he banished everything but the Shangri-Era. It, it actually, like, kind of helped me win the game, honestly. Um, for the extra deck, we're playing one Goliath. One Donner, one BLS, because you auto win against Labyrinth. Uh, two copies of Lingaribo, because, you know, we don't want to lose in the mirror. Uh, one Diabolsis. The Cash Tira mirror last round, he hit this, and he said, why do you only play one? I said, I'll tell you after the match. Because he didn't hit the big eye. You always hit the big eye in the mirror match if you're going first. Flare Metal, it was okay. Uh, Dracosac never came up. Double Arise Heart, because I never needed fucking three. We were never at the top tables. 
two Shangri Era because it's good, and then two copies of Zeus that came up once last round. So yeah, that's the extra deck, fam. Ah, uh, let's see. We're playing three copies of D Shifter in the side because Shifter's good. Uh, one copy of Feather Duster because I don't like your back row. Uh, three copies of Evenly because if you're not playing three of this card in 2023, I don't know what you're doing. This card needs to go to fucking one. I hate this card. Three copies of D Barrier. So fun fact. If you activate Forbidden Lance on your Arise Heart and then you activate D Barrier after that, the Arise Heart's unaffected by D Barrier because you already lanced it. That was that was really nice. That was really delicious. Um, three copies of Royal Decree. I stopped one evenly match, other than that it was fucking trash. Uh, and then our uh, for time, uh, Arsenal Falcon, Napalm Dragonius. Napalm Dragonius does 600. That's all that matters. So that's my regional report, y'all. I'm going to sell this deck, throw it on in the garbage, as I said about Crystal Beast. This deck is obviously much better than Crystal Beast. Uh, I'd rather go and gouge my own eyes out than play Crystal Beast at a regional again. Um, but I, I had fun. You know, 56th place, I think that more than anything, this regional was a bit of a wake-up call for me. That even though I know I'm a good player, uh, it was a wake-up call in the sense that like I'm not as good as I thought. And that's okay, because sometimes us as players, whether you're casual or you're competitive, you think that you're a better player than you are, and sometimes you just got to get that little smack in the face a little bit to remind yourself, hey, you still have a lot to learn, or just, hey, you're not as good as you thought that you were. And that's okay. You know, uh, playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and wanting to get better at it is a part of the game. It's about playing a deck that will pants people and catch them off guard. You know, uh, the only time that I've ever really gotten my invite was playing decks that weren't really on the meta radar. Like when I played Cosmo back in like 2014, 2015, that was on the meta radar, but even then I squeezed in at six and three. No one was expecting 60 card branded Eldritch when I played that, you know? So no one was expecting Trickstar when I went X2 and came in 18th place with that. So it's all about the decks that you play. If you're able to pants people, if you're able to play a deck that you're comfortable with, that people just aren't expecting, you know, that can help you get your invite. Obviously, everybody and their mother knows how Kashira functions. They know the lines. They know how to beat it. So you're you're going with into an event with that in mind, and it, it just didn't work out for me. The deck is still very good. It's still one of my favorite decks of all time, even though I'm talking shit about it. it it's still one of my favorite decks of all time. I will forever love this deck. Um, you know, I started playing it at a rough point in my life, and uh, you know, I'm happy to have had that experience. So, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.